Hello, welcome or welcome back. It's time to do something for the eyes. Maintenance or just something good for the eyes with all the extra screen time we're getting nowadays. I will start with my right eye, so I will come to lie on my left side. If you want to work with your left eye, you have to come to lie on your right side. And you will have to translate the movements accordingly. You will need a surface, of course, a bed, a couch, a yoga mat and a pillow. And best is a longish pillow or a folded up towel that has this longish kind of shape. And then please come to lie on your side. And have your left arm elongated on the floor, just resting on the floor in front of you. So please do not lie on your left arm like this, but have your left arm in front of you and have your head supported by a pillow. You could, if, if you're flexible enough, rest your head on the floor as well. It really depends on how flexible you are. I prefer to have a, a nice little supportive pillow. And your right arm also elongated on top of your left arm. So your right hand is on top of your left hand. But not stiff like a stick, but just extended and resting. And also the legs folded up a little bit on top of each other. If it's more comfy for you, you can have a pillow in between your legs. Just make yourself comfortable on your side. If your back is hurting, maybe when you're on your side, you could even snug in a little blanket under your under under the left side, in between your armpit and your pelvis, close to the pelvis. Just make yourself comfy. And then the first movement is to lift your right hand, your right arm upwards. So you start to lift your right hand upwards, upwards, upwards and at some point the hand will be extended towards the ceiling and that's good enough. Don't go backwards. Like This is like a book opening movement but the purpose is not stretching but we focus on the movement. Focus and then bring your arm back down again. So don't hold your arm, you could hold your arm stiffly, but why? Too much tension and maybe that's also the problem of the hand, the problem of the shoulder, the problem of the eyes actually, they're all connected, that there's too much tension, too much stiffness, or maybe at some point not enough, so we try to distribute effort, work, get rid of effort and do meaningful work, give the muscles good coordination, a good organization. So continue, continue with this movement and look at your thumb, maybe, or look at your hand. So where are you looking at when you look at your hand while you lift your hand towards the ceiling? So we have two questions to ponder, <laughs> two questions to look at. Um, one question is, how much should the head roll? How much should the shoulder move when you lift your hand? And the other question is, how much should you rotate your arm when you lift your arm or your hand? So these are two, two questions we will answer or we will look at through movement. We talk to ourselves, to our bodily embodied existence through movement. That's a nice concept, isn't it? We seek to contact, to communication in this physical world through being physical. So interesting. Um, okay, the first question, the first question, the first question. Put, please put your, your palm on your forehead and bring your right elbow onto your left elbow. So we have this little packet and then lift, start to lift your right elbow towards the ceiling and maybe a little bit, like 115 degrees, a little bit backwards, but not much and then bring your elbow forwards again. So it's a kind of a constraint, a 
nice little packet and because you're touching your forehead, because you have your hand on your forehead, on your head, there's this connection of the arm and the shoulder and the neck and the clavicle and the sternum and the upper ribs. And they move accordingly or proportionally distributed. So roll backwards and forwards and observe how now everything moves together when you have, your, when you have this constraint. And of course, you can play with where you put your hand, how you put your hand. But in the end, it's still a packet. And then take a rest on your side again, with the arms on top of each other. So we make this little pause. We don't stop the movement or we stop and then we start again and start to lift your, your hand again and look towards your hand while you lift it towards the ceiling. And back again and see if you can already observe change, improvement. in how you roll your head when you look at your hand while you raise your hand towards the ceiling. So the next time your hand is towards the ceiling, keep your hand towards the ceiling and continue to roll your head. Now it's only your head that is rolling. So once your head is, once you're facing to your left hand and then you roll, you continue to roll your head and so the once you're facing to your right hand so once you're looking to the right hand and you roll your head to look to your left hand. So it's only your head that is rolling. So your head is like a <laughs> ping pong, like a ping pong, yes? Ping pong, that was the name of a computer game and is still the name of a ball game. Ping pong, your head is, your eyes are ping ponging from, yes, and so your eye movements and your head movements. And then at some point start to move your hand and your eyes together again. So when you lift your hand towards the ceiling, you roll your head together with the movement of your right shoulder and the rest of the bunch, <laughs> shoulder, shoulder blade, clavicle, chest, sternum, like all these things move and then at some point come to take a rest again. Then bring your right hand towards the ceiling and with your head face to your left hand, so we'll do this variation just as well, and then roll your head and move your arm so that your nose and your right hand are always in opposite direction. So you roll your head to face the ceiling and at the same time you move your right hand to rest on top of your left hand. So your neck is moving in the opposite direction. <laughs> that's, that's going to be the most extreme variation we have today in stock. In the stock, in our today's repertoire, oppositional movement. This is really an oppositional movement, but the shoulder girdle moves contrary. So what to do with the head? How much does the head to shift, to lift? What do you have to do with the head? So there's space in your neck to look to the ceiling while your right hand is on top of your left hand. How can you accommodate this movement? And then again, take a rest on your left side.
So the next question we are going to look at is the rotation of the arm. Again, um, how do we start? Start with your arm towards the ceiling, your right hand towards the ceiling. You can or cannot look at your right hand, it's up to you, but start to rotate your arm, your right arm around its axis. Mm, like, like a submarine or like a duck that's looking to the left and to the right. So the arm doesn't change position, but you just rotate your arm so that your palm is once facing behind you or even upwards and then the palm is facing downwards towards your feet and then your palm, the palm of your right hand or your upper hand is facing forwards and upwards and yes, there's also the elbow. So you can look at your arm, how you're doing this movement. So the, the hand is rotating. We have like two bones. We have two bones, two bones in the lower arm that can rotate around each other and we have one bone in the upper arm that can also rotate and the fingers, the little fingers, they can also rotate and the shoulder can rotate and, and the shoulder blade can rotate. So this is interesting. So let's take a short rest. Just not to overdo things and then bring your arm up again. Ah, yes, not only that, but so that blood can come back into the arm because when the hand is pointing towards the ceiling, you might feel the hand is getting a little bit colder. So we have to pump up. Luckily, all these things work on, an, on its own. We don't have to think about the blood moving upwards. And start to rotate, <laughs> rotate your arm again. And... Um, employ more of your shoulder. So the hand is rotating, the lower arm is rotating, the elbow is rotating, the upper arm is rotating, but your shoulder blade is also rotating and your shoulder can come forwards when your palm is facing backwards and more. So exaggerate, start to exaggerate this movement. Mm, think of your arm Think of your arm as someone, like a kid, which is jumping over a barrel. Let's say your upper, your torso is, is a barrel and the, the arm is like a little kid jumping from one side to the other. So allow your head to roll, allow your shoulder blade to move, allow your shoulder to move forwards. And of course, don't hold your breath. Just exaggerate, exaggerate more until you have a, a concept, an image for this movement where you rotate your arm and your shoulder can come, the shoulder can come in front of you, actually, more towards the floor in front of you and more towards the floor in the back of you. And you can roll your head, of course, and actually, if you were in the market for memorizing these movements, you could actually start to do counter movements like we did before, roll the head in the wrong direction. Or you could start to divide the eyes, but we will come to the eyes in a moment. So let's not make this lesson too complicated. Just see what you discover, what you yes, what you experience, what you discover, how you think about what you're doing. You observe what you're doing at the same time you're doing something. Listening and moving, observing and moving, feeling and sensing, refining movement, making movement worse, making movement better. Like a good artist, you can, like a good musician, you have a freedom to experiment and to become better. And then let, let's Let's take a rest. Let's take a rest on the back. So please come to roll onto your back. And if the pillow is too high, you can pillow, you can remove the pillow. So you're lying on your back. And the back is kind of a neutral situation. And just feel how you're lying on your back. Again, I achieved for you, I helped you to feel 
heavily asymmetrical. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> Maybe your right shoulder feels very different to your left shoulder. Um, how the, your sensation of your shoulder, maybe even your pelvis is slanted to one side is lower than the other. Maybe you even experience that one leg is, isn't that a miracle? A couple of intelligently planned movements can change or can make us become aware of how we feel and maybe even how we look. Maybe if you look at one at your legs, maybe one foot is more underneath your head if you were standing. Maybe uh, one leg is closer to the midline than the other. Maybe one, the toes of one leg are pointing more outwards or inwards. Let's have a look internally and um, for real with your eyes, how you, how you lie down, how you perceive yourself when you take a rest like this. Please come back onto your left side. I'm just talking, talking through, all through the break. Come onto your left side again. In the same starting pos position um, with your right arm on top of your left arm and again like in the beginning, lift your right arm towards the ceiling and follow your right arm with your eyes, with your head and then bring your right hand back again onto the floor and see how you're doing it now, how much you are aware of what you're doing and maybe what you're doing is not the same like in the very beginning. So you're no you now have a, a deeper knowledge for this a, a freshly raised awareness for all the things that move and move together and move in relation. And let's slip into the eye lesson part of this lesson. So when you lift your right hand, pick something on your right hand with your eyes. Maybe the thumbnail of your right thumb and focus, focus with your eyes on your right thumbnail. You could as well focus on one of the finger berries or maybe some of the lines or one like a specific spot on your hand. Whatever you choose, stay with that. The thumbnail is a nice little thing to look at because it's more or less precise, like a spot you can look at. If the thumbnail is too boring to look at, you could pick up your phone. <laughs> you could actually do that and look at the screen or read, read your ebook on the screen, but stay, st like focus on something. And become aware of a moment when you don't focus, when you don't see that our brain is doing this. Our brain doesn't get visual information all the time, but it interpolates, it makes up, it fills in blank spaces for us. So when you focus on your thumbnail, make sure you look at it, except when you blink, of course, then it's gone for a fraction of a second. But make sure it goes slow enough so you can see if you're Perception is continuous, continuous. If you're always looking or if there's blank spaces in between and uh, you have to go slow enough to notice whenever the brain doesn't receive visual information but acts like as it, if it does. And yeah, relax, keep your hand relaxed, keep your hand relaxed, roll your neck. So before we warmed up with these shoulder movements, just to become aware, so still be, still be aware of everything that happens in your shoulder blade, in your arm, in your bones, in your head, but look at your finger and then 
at some point we need to take a rest. And this lesson can be not overwhelming but intense. So you can take a rest at any time or you could stop. Or if you're in the market for memorizing these movements, you could do that after you wake up. And I would recommend you always do this lesson in daylight, I forgot to say that. So daylight is best for this lesson. But maybe you can also experiment with artificial lighting and see how that is different. Up to you. It could be interesting. Now, do you have a way to, uh, to close your left eye? So either close your left eye just with your eyelid or use your left hand to cover your left eye. But if you cover your left eye, please make sure you don't press on your eyeball. Or you could use like a little scarf or something so that you can really focus on your right eye. And then with your right eye, look at your thumbnail again and start to lift your hand towards the ceiling. But this time, do not roll your head. Keep your head fixed, planted. Keep your head planted. Keep your left cheek on the floor. Do not roll your head towards the ceiling. Only lift your right hand towards the ceiling. And you're following your right thumb with your eye but not all the way to the ceiling. Stay within the area where you can focus sharply on your right thumbnail or whatever finger or spot you chose. So let's start again. Have your hands in front of you. Focus on with your right eye. Focus on your right thumbnail and start to lift your hand, your right hand, without rolling your head head so without rolling your head so you have to move your right eye actually and only lift your right hand for as far as you can focus sharply so good question what what about your eyesight when you need glasses should you do this lesson with or without glasses what if you can't see sharp to begin with well, at some point, even if your thumbnail is not that sharp, but at some point when you raise your hand higher, it will blur out, it will become blurry, even more blurry than it was to start with. So there's a range of movement where, you're, where you can focus the best, however focus that is for you but there's a range of movement where you can focus the best and at some point it just it just becomes your peripheral field so stay inside so how, how far can you lift your lift your hands how far can you move your right eye actually and for me it's this far for me it's for me it's here for me the border how far i can lift is maybe how far is that? 60 centimeters? How many degrees? 45 degrees to the side? Maybe 30? And take a rest. Give your eyes a rest. And then let's do the same thing again, but not only to the side, but you can move or please move your arm a little bit downwards also and see where is the area where is the area where you can see sharply so you can move your your thumb to the right and down and up 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 of somewhere in front of you maybe you are tempted to bring your hand closer towards your eye or how far can you bring it away from your eye? So where is the area when you go through it, when you actually experiment with where is the area of where you can focus, where you can see sharp? And maybe you will notice other qualities, not only sharp, but color, accuracy, aberration, um, geometry, like... Uh, so our eye is really a lens and the lens has attributes 
properties. <coughs> and uh, we process these images and then take a rest again. We don't want to overdo it. Mm, just here, yeah, a rest on the side. And then the next, the next step, as I see important, bring your hand towards the ceiling. So lift your right arm towards the ceiling and turn your head to look at your right hand. And if you, if you can, somehow close your left eye. So this is our starting position. And so you're looking towards the ceiling and your right hand is towards the ceiling. The left eye is closed, right eye focus again on the landmark on your right hand and then move your right hand to the left without moving your head. So your head is focused or straight ahead towards the ceiling. And so the right hand comes closer to the floor, which means you can explore the inner edge. So your thumb is moving alongside your nose. And the shape of your nose on the inside edge. And up and down and left and right. And here, I think it's more easy to stay in the area where you have sharp focus because, mm, because of the nose. The nose is like the natural barrier, the, the wall. It's the wall in the west. Then please come to lie onto your side again. And now we're going to reverse the movement. Reverse the movement of the hand and the eyes or the arm and the head. And that's going to be really cool. So how do we start? At first you're inside lying and then please bring your right arm towards the ceiling and follow with your head. So we're going to go up, up, up. So the right arm is to the ceiling and you're looking to your hand. And then keep your hand towards the ceiling and keep looking towards your thumb and roll your head to the left and to the right or a little bit up and down and keep looking at your thumbnail. So maybe you want to, you could um, cover your left eye. So you're only looking through your right eye and then roll your head while you keep your hand towards the ceiling. So this is a reversal of the movement. So instead of moving the eyes, we move the head and the eye stays fixed to, to one point. So the head is rolling around the eyeball. <laughs> I mean, how cool is that? And again, roll just to the extent that your thumbnail, that you can focus on your th uh, thumbnail or on your fingers, that your hand stays in focus. And see how far away, to what angles can you move your head so that you can still focus the image you perceive is still focused. So that as an idea, I don't want to tire you out. So please come back to side lying and we will take a break. And we take a, take a break on the back. So please come onto your back again. Oy. And if you open your eyes and look at the ceiling, 
through one eye and then the other eye, you, you might already see a difference between your right eye and your left eye. But maybe for one, because the left eye was closed, but for the other reason, maybe the right eye is already uh, maintaining <laughs> in maintenance mode and improving again. Then come back onto your left side. with your arms on top of each other and what do we do next? The same thing, keep your head in front towards, oriented towards your left hand and with your right eye look at your right thumb or any landmark and start to lift your right hand and don't roll your head but just follow your hand with your right eye and then move with your hand as far as you can still see as far as you can you can actually have both eyes open in this variation because the left eye will only see the nose and the right hand can move more than 90 degrees backwards um, in theory I think or in general in population studies it's like 105 degrees how far back can you move your right hand without rolling your head and still see your right hand so you can wiggle your fingers to see hello hello I uh, okay hello catch your eye and be at the very border with your hand of your peripheral field so um, so that's to the right and you can observe where you lose sharpness and when you go further backwards you can maybe observe where you lose color, accuracy. Maybe it's not as intense the color of your hand anymore or the clothes you're wearing. Maybe if you, you, could, you could take a red pillow or red socks or something that is red color or blue color and move it around and see how the color accuracy changes but also how geometry maybe changes something that's round might start to be oblong and then also move alongside the very border of your peripheral field so move your hand a little bit downwards and see which curve do you have to follow to still see your hand and don't roll your head so you have to inhibit head and neck movements it's only your right arm that's moving so you're moving alongside the edge the border of your peripheral field and see where can your eye actually the eye can the eye muscles become more flexible or can you conquer <laughs> new areas of movement you're usually not using so you can again you can wiggle your fingers to catch your eye to draw your eye like our parents did for us with toys hopefully when we were children to catch the attention of our eyes to catch our attention ah hello and move around the border of your visual field just play also go up and go down and, and see where and how which properties with attributes move along and see how it is to move at least in this distance so you can bring your hand closer and further and up and down and more to the right and more in front again to to what is available in in this in this area uh, so this is our play and then oh, this can really be this can really be it can be overwhelming but it can be also very strenuous for the eye so take a rest on your left side you can close your eyes take a rest or keep your eyes open just 
just don't do anything. You can put your right hand wherever you want. So these are the movements I have in this I lesson. Mm, I think fair easy enough to memorize, but of course I'm here in this video for you to guide you through the movement if you want to do it again or if you want to play with the other side. I think it's overwhelming to do too much at once and it's good to take maybe take a break of a day and do then and do the other side tomorrow. Let's do a last movement before we close this session. Bring your hands on top of each other again. Uh, hands on top of each other, yes, with the arms straight and look at your right hand and lift your right hand and follow your right hand with your head and your eyes and just see how you're doing it now. How this movement has improved or changed to, from the first time we did it together today. Yeah, so, and the challenge is not to look at how strong you are or how far you can move, but the challenge is to identify qualities, movement qualities, or qualities of sensation, qualities of feeling, qualities of thinking, properties of thinking, what you can observe. So this is, this is our, our field of work, mm, or our art, maybe we we could say, to look at these things. Yes, is that nice? Is, does this feel nice? Is this interesting? Please come back a last time on your back. So we Take the, the liberty to be on the back for a last time just to <laughs> compare the maybe wildly different sides and compare the eyesight. So when you look through your eyes into the world or if you let the world come into your eyes, into yourself through the eyes, if you have a difference between your right side and your left side, your right eye, maybe you can perceive, oh, ah, the peripheral field of your right eye suddenly is much bigger than the peripheral field of your left eye, but yes, <laughs> is it? Maybe it's just easier to move the right eyeball. And maybe after the lesson, take a look at the mirror. Maybe you can see, you can see an actual change in the tonos of your face. On the right side and the left side of your face, or the right eye, anything around the right eye and the left eye. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is to get up and face the world. We need to finish this lesson. Whoa come up again into this world, which we never left. All right, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Share your experiences in the comment if you like to share. Leave your like. Thank you for watching. Take good care of yourself and see you in the next video. Deine 
rechte Hand, lass, lass den Kopf wieder nach vorne ausgerichtet und folg deiner Hand nach rechts, nur mit den Augen, mit dem rechten Auge in dem Fall, die Hand weiter hinauf Richtung Zimmerdecke, bis zur Zimmerdecke, bis, zu, bis sie, na, lass, die, lass den Kopf nach vorne, lass den Kopf nach vorne noch, ja, bis die Hand verschwindet. Und das ist nochmal ein anderer Bereich. Vorher waren wir in dem Bereich, sind in dem Bereich geblieben, wo die Hand. Und ja. ja? Kann ich eine das rechte Auge ist jetzt viel wacher oder heller als das linke, das an und für sich das besser sehende Auge ist, das linke. Beim rechten okay. habe ich ja direkt über den See noch an und für sich die Wolken auf der Linse. Und jetzt sieht es aber klarer als das linke Auge. Obwohl ah, wirklich? Die Wolken nur, ja. Wow, das ist eine schöne Aufnahme. Ja, die rechte Seite ist ein bisschen offener, finde ich. Mhm. 